Hi everyone, it's Chloe here and I'm the owner, making creator of Emmy Creations. Welcome back to my channel. So today's video will be about um, myself designing a new toy and this um, design with me video will be a little bit different to my previous ones where I'm actually designing a commission and um, I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this before but I don't usually accept commissions but this one was a special case I think because the person who um, has commissioned me is actually a previous buyer of a few of my toys and I couldn't say no because they've already supported my business so much and I just I guess I wanted to you know do another favor for them by designing and creating another toy for them um, and but this time in a form of a commission so I received this like I said through my market and they just reached out to me on Instagram and sent me a photo which I'll attach here of a really cute little clown toy so essentially I'm just replicating this design but through crochet um, and they told me that it has a lot of sentimental value and so I need to do a really good job with this design and try and get it exactly like it is um, just a little bit bigger that's what the client told me so I'm gonna go through the process of designing this commission I'm also going to ask the client for permission if I'm allowed to release the digital pattern for this particular design because I don't have a clown design in my store and I would love to have a cute chubby clown design um, with the snuggly yarn that I'm going to be using as well so um, I'm going to ask them for permission with that because previously when I did a commission um, some clients would tell me not to release the digital pattern for them because they want the toy to be unique and they would want it only to be you know one of a kind in the world um, <laughs> so I'm going to ask this client uh, for permission first before I release the pattern but um, as I'm designing I'm still going to write the pattern down as I go just in case um, um, but yeah, so I have the yarn ready. It's basically just my usual baby snuggly yarn. So these are the colors. So it's just the white, pink, yellow, and blue, very cute baby pastel colors, um, which I'm really excited to use because I've never used the pink or the blue colors before. Um, but yeah, so I think if you remember from the image, there was a bit of green in there, but I was able to talk to the client and they said it's okay to have the body completely blue. So they were happy for that slight variation in the final product. So yeah, so I've got the yarn ready. I've got a image of a design that I need to work with. All I have to do is actually get started on it and, you know, making this really cute sentimental toy for this particular client. And hopefully I do a really good job because I don't want to let them down. And, you know, knowing that it is, you know, it holds a special place to their heart. I really want to do a really good job for them. So I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to get started. Okay guys, so I've just joined the legs together and now I'm working on the body. It's looking good so far. I'm hoping that the shape of the body comes out the way that I want it, but I won't know until I complete it and I put stuffing in. But I thought I would just talk to you about how I design because people have asked me um, through Instagram or through YouTube um, just how I design and I've done a YouTube video explaining the processes that I take to design but I don't really go into detail in terms of what actually goes through in my head because when I start designing um, I yes I do draw or I do do a sketch of my designs before drawing, but they're very basic sketches. It doesn't, you know, I don't draw all the 
side views you know i don't draw the top view the side view the back view of my designs i literally just draw a concept sketch and then i work from there and then once i have a sketch ready i would literally and i'm not even lying i would literally stare stare at that drawing and visualize um how that toy would look three-dimensionally in my head um and i think it's just um uh, I think it's just from many years of, you know, designing and architecture or even just designing um, amigurumi that I'm able to have that skill to visualize things um, that don't exist yet in my head. <laughs> I know it sounds really strange when I put it into words, but that's literally how I design. I just see how I want it in my head and then I go and I proceed to you know create the different shapes and make the toy I think it really helps that I know you know the different techniques to create the different shapes and because I'm able to um you know visualize it as well I'm able to you know just create the different parts very um quickly um, without too many hiccups though you know with my previous you know design with me videos I you would have seen me you know pulling things apart because the shapes didn't go out um, you know turn out as planned and I have to start again which is all part of the design process so I'm um, doing this commission it's no different I am you know working with the same strategy you know just rather than having a sketch i have a series of images that i refer to to um, visualize the the shape and how i want to start designing this toy so i obviously started with the body first um because that will i, I felt like the body was um, a better way to start because i figured that i can probably do the body and the head completely attached through one make so no sew and then I will sew I will crochet the arms and sew those on and then crochet the hat and then put place that onto the head and hopefully it actually works <laughs> um but yeah I'm quite confident that this design will go quite smoothly because it's not too complex compared to you know my taiyaki design for example um and and yeah so and also another thing is i usually don't design using the baby snuggly yarn i usually design using cotton but because with this commission um that my client wanted the toy in the baby snuggly yarn so they wanted a chubby toy um i've had to design with this first um fingers crossed you know the design goes well and i don't have to pull it apart because i know um if i pull this yarn apart it doesn't you know look great after it's been used once already so fingers crossed i've made the right choices with this design and that it is going to be a success and i won't have to you know pull it apart and do it all over again and just to talk about why i don't do commissions the reason why i don't do them as much i did them quite a bit at the beginning or at the early stages of my business because i was you know trying to get some extra bit of cash so that i could you know purchase more yarn and more materials so that i can design more but right now the reason why i don't do commissions is because it actually takes a lot of time to think of the design the design process usually takes too long because sometimes the client will want me to do a sketch and i'll do a sketch and then they'll come back to me asking for changes and then i'll have to redraw rethink how i'm going to make things and then it's a kind of this back and forth process which takes a lot of time and then it comes down to you know actually making the toy and then there you know like i said before i'm literally working from scratch there's no pattern that i'm working with i'm literally just working off a sketch to create the toy and i always send progress photos to my clients so that they can see the progress of the work um and sometimes when they see the photos they'll ask me to make slight changes and then you know and then I go back and I redo it. And sometimes people don't understand that when you change something, it takes time to adjust and make those changes. 
So if there was already a pattern existing, then I would take that commission because one, I don't need a design, I just need to follow a pattern. And I just, you know, charge them based on how long it took me to make the toy um, and, and the materials. And it usually comes up to be fairly, you know, fair. And my clients are usually happy to, to pay for that. So, um, so yeah. And again, I always add, if I have to purchase the pattern, I always add that cost into, into the, the, um, commission cost as well. So, so yeah, that's, that's really the reason why I don't really do commissions is because one, it takes too long and two, some people don't value the time that you take to design the toy. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's really the reason why I don't really do commissions. Um, but yeah, like I do still get messages from people asking me, you know, do you take commissions? And I always turn them down. Maybe I could probably, you know, refer them to other crochets maybe, but I don't know if other crocheters are taking commissions, which is the reason why I just don't mention it. I just say I don't do commissions at all. Um, but if you do plan on doing a commission, I, the way I did it before was that I actually had a, um, Google form that people had to fill in. And then whenever I got a submission from that Google form, then I know that, um, you know, someone is interested in a commission and I literally just put that in my link tree profile. And they would just fill in that form, I get a notification, and then I contact them, letting them know the price and talking to them about how, you know, what kind of toy they want. Um, and in that form, I break down the prices as well. I, I, I let them know how much a small toy costs, a medium-sized toy costs, and a large size. Um, and, and yeah, so because usually they would want to know, you know, the, the range, the, the price range of a toy before they commit. And that's the reason why I put a price range in my Google form as well. And on my Google form, I also indicate that they have to pay, um, you know, 50% for the toy. I've kind of changed that now. You have to pay a hundred percent, um, because I don't want them to, you know, commit and then come back to me and say, oh, they don't want the toy anymore. Um, but I also make it very known that, you know, you can't get refunds. Um, so, so you really need to be a hundred percent sure that you want to, you know, commit to this, um, toy and this commission before, before you actually pay, pay me. And then once I get the payment, I proceed with the, the commission and I send them progress photos. So that was how I used to do it, but I don't do it anymore because I am a very busy person now um, with my business growing um, and my focus being on designing more. Um, my focus on actually, you know, selling physical toys and doing commissions is not on my, it's not on the top of my priority list. So yeah. But yeah, I thought I would just have a little ramble about that while I crochet the body because I'm literally just doing single crochet stitches. Um, but yeah, it's looking pretty good. I think this is going to be a fairly big toy, which is what they wanted. So I'm just going to keep crocheting and stop rambling. Okay, guys, I think the body is done. It has a little booty, which is exactly like the images. I think I got the proportions right, so I'm really happy with this. Now I need to continue working here to create the head. The head is not a perfect sphere. It's actually more of a flatter head, so I'm just going to keep continue working on this. I'll be working in the back loops because I'm going to keep the front loops to create the collar. Um, so yeah, I'm going to see how that goes. But so far, the body is looking pretty consistent with the images that I've been referring to. So quite happy with this.
Okay, guys, so it is the next day and I managed to get the head done as well yesterday. I did have to do a few tries to get the right size of the head, but I finally managed to get this. So I'm just going to turn the camera around so I can show you what I've done. And here is what I've done so far. So you can see it has a little bottom. Its feet are facing downwards and I have the head sewn on to the body. The next thing I'm going to do is actually to make the collar first. And you can see that I've got a pin in here and I've actually got a pin at the on the other side as well. And usually I would use pins to indicate where I want things to be. So in this case, I indicated where the center of the body is just so that it's easier for me to make calculations in terms of the collar. And I usually use pins when I want to, you know, indicate where I want the eyes to be, um, just indicating where I want parts to be so that I know how to sew them on or where to sew those details on so so yeah that's another tip if you're designing definitely use pins to help you you know with the design process just to indicate where you want things to be um, placed and so forth so I'm going to go ahead and make the collars which are pink and yellow and then once that's done I'm going to make the hat and then after that I will make the arms which shouldn't be too hard and hopefully it will look similar to the images that um, my client sent me so I guess I'm gonna have to get started now Okay guys, so I've sewn on the hat and the collar and it is looking so good. It looks like a big baby. <laughs> Not yet a clown, but it is looking 
quite similar to the images that were sent. So now I just need to make the arms, embroider the face um, characteristics, and also sew this leg up. And then it should be done. I am so happy with this guy. I really hope my client likes it too. It's so huggable. It actually seriously feels like a baby. <laughs> but I think I'll be able to finish this very soon. So I'm going to go ahead and make those arms and do the rest of the bits. Okay guys, so I just sewed his little nose on and here is an example of how I use my pins when I design. So right now I've placed some pins to indicate to me where I need to embroider, embroider the eyes. Um, and this makes the process a lot easier for me rather than trying to guess um, where I want those eyes to be embroidered um, and you know saving a lot of time in that sense so i'm going to get some green yarn and embroider these eyes following the pins that i've placed and then i'm going to embroider the mouth and then this little toy well not really little this big toy will be done very soon product guys it looks almost <laughs> captain i'm doing a video let me come back i just need to give captain his nom nom <laughs> okay bed captain he's munching in the background and i think you might hear him but anyways i am finally done i am so happy with how this commission went it is massive i've just had to step back a bit so that you can see how big it is it's Head is as big as my head. <laughs> um, but I showed a photo of this toy to my client and he was very happy with it. So I'm just going to package this guy up in the background. And I'm actually planning to write the pattern for this guy. Um, I might change the facial features um, so that it looks a little cuter. But I'm really happy with how the shape turned out. Um, but yeah, it is... This was a really fun little commission and it was actually, didn't take me too long to do and it was really quick to design as well. So um, all the photos that they sent me really helped. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this little video of kind of designing with me again um, and creating this cute little commission. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions about this video, don't forget to um, leave them in the comments below. Um, and if you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I've got a few things planned, which I'm really, really excited about. And I think you guys will be excited about them too. Um, but otherwise, I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you all very soon. Bye. <laughs>